Okay, I'm going to give this another shot. The field around the ring is so high. I just finished a seven minute video for you. Man, my counter was going eight. The camera was going up and down. I mean, a total fiasco. Uh, what I haven't done for quite a while is admonish you that keep computers, watches, away from any of the stuff I show you. And for Pete's sake, if you have a pacemaker, don't even be in the same room. Okay, what I have here is a counter, and I'm going to, let me put it down here, near the circuit. Look at it, it's going eight. Anyway, I'll use the counter and hold it away from the circuit like I am the camera. What I'm doing is I'm charging a 450 microfarad 200 volt Rubicon electrolytic. And there's the meter, and you can see it's 138 volts right now. So what I'm going to do is we'll, of course, lose a couple of seconds since I'm operating one-handed here. But I'm going to short that capacitor out, start my timer, and we'll see how long it takes to get back to 100 volts. So watch me short it out and hope I don't get shocked. Okay, now we see we're climbing up 16, 28, 32 volts. And we'll take and hope that our counter doesn't go eight while this process is taking place. So we're now up to 67 volts. Don't connect anything to the circuit, fellas, like I'm doing here. I'm just doing this for illustration. You do not get the full potential or benefit out of the ring if you have something external hanging on it. Uh, due to inductance, capacity, lead length, the meter physical size itself, all of that will impact the operation. Now, if you want to do something with what you obtain from the loop other than lights or LEDs, you can use a SIDAC. And you can use like a low voltage side act, say 100, 100 volts or 128 volts. Build a self-contained circuit that has no connections to the real world. When the side act gets to the proper point and fires, you can put it into a 40 watt light bulb or whatever. Uh, it's quite interesting what this circuit's capable of doing. And we'll get more into detail as it goes on, but, okay, we're at, I goofed, we're at 121 volts already, I'll stop this meter. Okay, it got to 121 volts in 1 minute and 25 seconds. And remember, that's a 450 microfarad capacitor. Now, you can take and, and figure from that information, I'm not going to do the math for you. But you can figure the charge curve, what the current would be required out of the generator. Uh, you can come up with what it was doing here and realize that if you didn't have that meter hung on it, it would be far better. But anyway, that ought to give you a pretty good indication of what's going on. Here we're 133 volts. Uh, how high does it go? Well... What I do is I go ahead and let it operate on its own, nothing connected to it. Then I take and immediately grab the leads and clip them across the capacitor to see what the voltage is, hoping that the leakage in the capacitor isn't great enough to make a significant difference between the time I get the leads on it. As it turns out, unless you're using small capacitors, there's no real problem. So anyway, I said I'd put this on. There were 137 volts. Uh, short this thing out again. Always scares the daylights out of me when I do this because I have been bitten so much over the years that it's just not funny. And I don't appreciate it. Okay. Well, that's enough for today. Uh, I'll go ahead and put another video up for you and we'll... 
We'll explore this a little bit deeper. There we are, back to 50 volts already. Okay, thanks for watching.